Launched in 1998, the 11 o'clock show was an irreverent late-night topical comedy programme originally helmed by abrasive Aussie Brendan Burns and, he's big in Scotland, Fred McCauley. We're glad you weren't tempted by Phil Collins Live by request on ITV. After all, who wants to listen to a middle-aged bald git wittering on? <laughs> but the show is better remembered for its breakout hosts, the cheeky little monkeys Ian Lee and Daisy Donovan. For me at the start, and then with Daisy a little bit later on, we were the ringmasters, you know, and we would have a live guest. We'd have an audience of maybe 300 people, I think, in the studio. We'd have films. We had the brilliant Tommy Vance. Hi, my name is Tommy Vance, and this is my News Gold. I'd never done any of this before. And suddenly I'm coming out and I'm reading comedy monologues and auto cue and I have no idea how I got through it. Did you see Gordon Brown's fantastic budget speech today? Brilliant. A bit like watching someone use a blow-up doll. You've got a sad single bloke spouting hot air and worrying about the problems of low inflation. <laughs> of course, actually, he's just fucking you and me. <laughs> Uh, that Thatcher, don't get me started, calm down. The 11 o'clock show was set out to be a slightly in-your-face, V-sign to the world, spirit of punk type show. With Brussels, do you feel like it's almost sort of like a boxing match and you're constantly getting fisted in the ring? <laughs> One of the ideas of the 11 o'clock show was it was going to be a showcase for new talent both on the screen and behind the screen and we had obviously on, on screen there was me, there was Daisy, there was Mackenzie Crook who was kind of the third wheel in the second series who was my flatmate at the time there was obviously Sasha there was Ricky we had Robin Ince Jimmy Carr was our warm-up man Mitchell and Webb were two of our writers Charlie Brooker was one of the writers Ian Morris Damon Beasley who went on to make the in-betweeners but undoubtedly the two biggest breakthroughs were the failed pop star from Reading called Ricky and trained clown from Hammersmith called Sasha check it out Ali G started off as a character called Youth Wanker, who's a bit like a youth TV character, but played for laughs. That character soon morphed into Ali G, and he was the show's instant hit, conducting ludicrously inappropriate interviews with unwitting politicians and this Victorian undertaker. Only joking, it's Jacob Rees-Mogg. So what if you got busy with my sister? <laughs> she ain't the cleanest girl out there. <laughs> Uh, well, it can be arranged. She'll be keen. Establishment figures would be so keen to look cool to the youth that they would switch off their bullshit detectors and engage with these interviews. What if they had a swimming pool made of gold but filled with champagne and not the cheap stuff? <laughs> then would they be in the what, upper class? What if, like Cleopatra, they bathed in asses milk? Um, in what? Asses milk. <laughs> And then, of course, there was Ricky Gervais, who played the role of a tasteless, insensitive reporter. Ricky's shtick was that he was fairly unpleasant and a bit racist and a bit homophobic, and he would just say laddish and slightly inappropriate things. Do blind people still get two quid off their colour licence? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what if their family's watching it? They're having a laugh at our expense. Yeah, Ricky, <laughs> Ricky can, we, can we leave the disabled stuff? It's just mildly offensive. Go on. Um, <laughs> It was finding a new comic voice, and he was quite different to the more right-on worthy things that were around at the time. How lucky we were with Sasha and Ricky to have on a little late night cult Channel 4 comedy show two of the biggest comedy stars in the world. You might get one person who goes on to be a movie star, but two people? It's never going to happen. <laughs>